In the previous talk, I introduced the idea of vibration modes. That was illustrated with the modes of a drum. And that was also used to show why we're so interested in vibration modes. In this talk, we're going to look at some of the instruments that we're really interested in and some other things here, just to see some examples of vibration modes of other things. Start by reiterating uh, something from the previous talk. All these instruments, all structures, can vibrate in many different ways. Each particular way is called a vibration mode and is associated with a particular resonance frequency. Now, let's start with this example. This is easier to think about than a violin. This is a, a mathematical xylophone, like these toy xylophones you see here. So we've got these individual little metal bars here, and you hit them with this hammer here. And that's the first, the lowest frequency of the vibration modes of this metal bar here. And you see that there's some position around about here where I've got the pointer, which is a nodal point where it's not moving. And there's another one here. So this mode has two nodal points. And those more or less are the places where you put the supports of the bar so that it can vibrate in this way. But as I said, the bar can vibrate in lots of other ways. Here's what the second mode looks like. This one's got three nodal points, one in the middle. Here's the third mode, four nodal points. Now, the ratios of the frequencies of those three things are these numbers that are written down here. If we call the first one frequency one, then the second mode is 2.75. The third mode is 5.41. Now the numbers don't matter except for one thing, which is that they're not whole numbers. This illustrates something really important which people are often confused about, and we'll see why they're confused when I come to the next slide. But the modes of this little chime bar here, they are not harmonics. The different frequencies are not whole number ratios. This is the system which does produce harmonics, and I deliberately didn't start with this. These are the first corresponding first three vibration modes of a string. And you can see the shape's plausible enough. The lowest mode has a half wavelength of vibration in the length of the string. The second mode has two half wavelengths. The third mode has three half wavelengths. And this time the frequency ratios for an ideal textbook string are 1 to 2 to 3, and that would carry on like that. So a mathematical textbook string has natural frequencies, modal resonance frequencies, which are in whole number ratios, so they are harmonics. But the string is the only mechanical system that does that. And it's really important that we don't use the word harmonics for the resonant frequencies of all these other things. Otherwise, we would find ourselves wanting to say that in this case, the harmonics are not harmonic. Uh, best to save the word harmonic for the theoretical idea of whole number ratios and call the rest resonant frequencies or natural frequencies or modal frequencies, anything you like, overtones. Those are all acceptable. So there were two simple systems, the chime bar and the string. Here's a step towards musical instruments. Here are some measurements of the first few vibration modes of a guitar body, courtesy of my friend Bernard Richardson. Now these are being visualised by a technique involving lasers and holograms. And essentially what this image shows you is a contour map of the displacement shape so you see all these ring-shaped contours here. That's showing a hill or a valley. The whole of the top of the guitar is bulging up and then bulging down in that vibration mode. Uh, if we move along to this third mode, now we've got a broad white 
band down the middle, that's marking the nodal line. And this has got one nodal line here, so it's going up on one side of that, down on the other side of it, in a similar way that we saw the modes of the drum in the previous talk. This one has got a nodal line curving around here, so it's going up above that line, perhaps, and down below it. The corresponding pictures for the violin body are much more complicated. Maybe you could have made a guess at some of those shapes on the guitar, but I don't think anybody managed to guess the modes of a violin, and it's only relatively recently when measurements became possible by one means or another that people have really known what the vibration mode shapes of a violin body are like. These are measurements. They're done by George Stepani using a technique called experimental modal analysis, which I will talk about in a later talk. Uh, that doesn't matter for the moment. What you're seeing here is four modes. In each one, you're seeing a view of the top plate and of the back plate. You'll recognize those shapes. Uh, this is the sort of two dimensional view of what those modes look like. If we want to see them in 3D, then here's what they look like. The same four modes. We're not going to say anything very much about those for now, uh, except to notice that they're really rather complicated and without measuring it you would not have been able to guess these things. And that's a story that will run through um, later stages of the analysis. So what do we learn from this? Well, just to repeat what I've said in the previous talk, every structure can vibrate in many different ways called vibration modes. Each mode has a resonant frequency and a mode shape. Now, the important thing we've seen here, resonance frequencies of vibrating structures are almost never harmonics. The frequencies are almost never in whole number ratios. The vibrating string is the exception to that. Um, even a real string is not exactly harmonic, but it's close to it. And that's no coincidence. That's the reason we use strings as the basis for all sorts of musical instruments, uh, because our ears rather seem to like the sound, or our brains rather like the sound of harmonically related frequencies. Sometimes mode shapes are relatively easy to guess, or at least relatively intuitive. The string, maybe the chime bar, maybe the guitar, but I think not the violin. It, you would not have guessed those mode shapes for the violin if you thought you would have done that. I bet that's only because you've seen the pictures before and have a half memory of it. People did not know what those were like until the possibility of doing measurements uh, arrives. So that's the end of this little talk. In the next one I'll introduce a particular kind of vibration mode to do with the air inside the sound box of an instrument like the guitar or the violin.